many people simply cannot believe that in the 21st century something like this could be happening. It's something out of science fiction, it's something out of a horror story or a horror movie. And in fact, they made a horror movie in, uh, about it a few years ago. And there was one in, made in Korea where a young couple were, were uh, on their honeymoon and they went to China and somehow the woman disappeared and her organs were taken from her. And this was a very popular fictional movie, but mm -hmm. we're not talking fiction, we're talking reality. So people, um, so people don't want to believe it. That's the first thing, and that's perfectly understandable. But at some point, even though you don't want to believe something, if the evidence is simply overwhelming, you've got to tell yourself that you've got to accept it and then to do something about it. That's the problem. Is a lot of people probably accept that it's happening, but they just don't want to do anything about it. And they have to do something about it. We all have to do something about it. We have about 20 recommendations in our book, or both books. But probably the best one is that the countries outside of China should stop buying the organs from, from China. That's one way. Then uh, we have to... Uh, we have to do about many other things, but we have to, to any place anybody from China goes, they have to be confronted with this thing. You are killing your own citizens who do gentle exercises and who, who are nonviolent, who are non-political, who believe in truth, compassion, forbearance, as the Falun Gong community does. You are killing these people for their organs. What, what, uh, what outrageous behavior. Are you a civilized government? Are you, are you worse than Hitler? Are you worse than Stalin? We can all do something. We can phone our member of parliament. We can write a letter to the editor. We can, uh, we can go to a cocktail party and tell a Chinese diplomat that this is, this is terrible what they're doing. I, I was at a, an event in Korea last year and uh, somebody from the, uh, from the uh, Chinese, uh, he's, he's not in the government, he's from a non-government organization in China. He got up and he made this wonderful speech about the environment. And it was all, mo most of it was nonsense as far as I'm concerned, but he, got, he made the speech. And so I got up and asked him, well, when is your government going to stop killing its own people for their organs? And he sort of stumbled around and he, he, the usual answer, he said, oh, there's no evidence of that, that it's happening. And, you know, just, just gibberish. So we all have opportunities when we can confront either the officials of the government or our citizens of China. And if, if they realize they're being, they're being ridiculed wherever they go and condemned wherever they go, I think the, the pressure would build from the top and the people at the t top would, would respond. I think they're doing it actually now. I think the, the fact that this um, latest <laughs> plenary of the party last week and the week before has come out and saying they're not going to take organs from uh, from prisoners anymore is a step in the right direction. It's easy to promise this and it's been promised before but the fact that they feel they have to promise it shows that they're getting a lot of pressure within the country and from outside the country. And basically naming and shaming is the thing that I'm convinced that the, uh, the, the party state in China responds to. And people say, oh, no, don't upset them. Don't say anything like this. But no, the, the, what they need to hear is people saying uh, there is not another government in the world that kills its own citizens and sells their organs to foreigners, let alone nationals.